Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 19th International Web for All Conference. Whoop, whoop. My name is Dragan Akhmetovic, and I'm one of the two general chairs of this year's conference, along with Victoria Yaneva, who is here with me. Okay, before we start, uh, we would like to also thank our partners in crime <laughs> with this. Um, first of all, our program chairs, so Donald Fitzpatrick and Shukru Eraslan. We would also like to thank our accessibility challenge chairs, Xiaomei Wu and Uran O. Oh. Our doctoral consortium chairs, Sergio Maschetti and James Colan. Our publicity chairs, Alexander Hamley, who will be tweeting the information about the papers at the beginning uh, of each presentation, and Mike Pacello from Evil Dogs. Our IBM award chairs, Yevgen Borodin and Chi Kazakawa. Our online chairs who will be helping us with accessibility related concerns, Christian Bernareggi and Sagar Babaya. Our hybrid conference chair, Makoto Weki, and our special issue chair, Maria Rauschenberger. And of course, the steering committee who made uh, all this possible and chose us to, to do this this year and the advisory committee, of course. We would also like to thank our sponsors, Google who sponsored uh, the doctoral consortium, IBM who sponsors Student with Disabilities Award, Intuit who sponsored the best paper awards, and Meta who sponsored our sign language interpreting. And at this point, uh, I would like to thank also our sign language interpreters for, for being here with us and for their awesome job. We also would like to thank our supporters, AbleDocs, for uh, the support with making PDF files accessible. OpenConf for uh, the part of managing uh, paper submissions and reviews. UD Talk for the captioning. This conference is also in cooperation with uh, the web conference, of course. ACM. and the ACM SIGWeb, SIGKAI, and SIG Access chapters. So, of course, we want to thank all the authors who submitted excellent papers this year's conference, and the program committee members who reviewed those papers. In the end, we had 36 valid submissions, out of which 18 were selected. So 11 technical papers and seven communication papers for a 50% acceptance rate. We had 37 co program committee members. So uh, essentially three uh, of them reviewed each paper. And so there were approximately three paper for each program committee member. And of course, we would like to thank you all for being here with us. And I would now like to thank Dragon for starting off the conference. Thank you, Dragon. Uh, and also for being an amazing uh, co-general chair. Uh, <laughs> um, as many of you may know, this year the conference was meant to be held both remotely and in person, 
where the in-person part was in the beautiful city of Lyon, which we already had the pleasure of visiting in 2018 and before that in 2012. Um, and I'm sure that all of those who attended at the time were thrilled to hear that we will be in Lyon again. However, <laughs> this was not possible. Uh, the COVID situation was still too uncertain for us to make the decision uh, to have an in-person conference. And as you know, we are co-located with the web conference. Uh, so uh, a decision was taken to have uh, both conferences be fully virtual. Uh, despite of this, the idea of returning to meet in person while preserving the accessibility opportunities for remote communication, interaction and work inspired the team of this year's conference. And the team, as you know, is accessibility in a hybrid world. We hope that soon we will gradually return to meet in person, but we believe that many of the changes introduced by the recent shift towards online communication are here to stay. That creates a necessity to combine online and in-person communication aspects, giving birth to what we now call a hybrid world. And this year, we mean to, we mean to explore, explore the implications of hybrid interaction on accessibility. Uh, just a few of the questions that we uh, ask related to these topics are, for example, what are the needs of people with disability in a hybrid workforce? What, uh, how can we ensure that hybrid education is inclusive? Or what are the accessibility requirements for hybrid healthcare, uh, collaboration for everyone, and so on and so forth? And um, many of our presentations will touch upon um, these questions. I also have the pleasure of saying a few words about the web for all history so far. Uh, it all started back in the distant 2004 as a workshop to make the World Wide Web accessible for people with disabilities. And over the years, the workshop has grown into the top conference for web accessibility research. We had the most incredible venues, and we really hope that next year we will all have the opportunity to meet again in person in an even more amazing location. To give even more reasons to attend and publish in Web for All, uh, our bibliometrics show that it is an influential, influential conference with a growing impact on the research community. Uh, according to the ACM Digital Library Bibliometrics, each of the Web for All's 520 papers that have been published so far have been downloaded on average of 407 times and has a citation average of 9. These data confirm that Web for All provides excellent visibility to papers and also achieves a strong scientific impact. Now, a few words about logistics, and this is actually a very important bit for people to pay attention to. So pay attention. Um, we have a Slack workspace, which is W4A2022, uh, sorry, W4A22.slack.com. And each session and paper has a channel for file sharing and communication throughout the event. So um, you can access all of that information there. Uh, do not forget to share your thoughts on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, and your favorite social media. Our hashtag is W4A2022, and you can tag the conference with at W4A underscore conference. And very important, we are an accessibility venue. Please do not forget to include alt text when tweeting images. Another important um, logistics announcement that is actually not included here on the slide is that uh, the sessions uh, will be recorded. So all of our presenters uh, have already received um, information about this and have opted in or out of this. Uh, but for those who are attending, uh, please keep that in mind uh, in case you do not want to have, um, you know, your image recorded or anything like that. Uh, captions in sign language, very important. American Sign Language and live captioning will be provided at the conference and uh, Interpreter now is providing the interpreters with the general sponsorship by Meta. At the same time, UD Talk provides live captioning and it is available in multiple languages. 
It will be available on the conferencing platform and for standalone access on a secondary browser window or on your mobile device. In terms of sessions, this year's conference program is spread across two days uh, and is anchored in Lyon time zone, uh, as it would have been for an in-person event. We have tried to find a convenient solution for authors who are not in this time zone, but unfortunately, uh, we acknowledge that this was not always possible for all tracks, and we apologize for that. We really did do our best. Um, we will have three keynotes. Uh, two are today. Uh, one uh, by Luz Reo, who will kick off the official conference program, and one who will end day one, uh, and by Robert, Robert Christofferson. Uh, in terms of presentations, uh, we have two categories of papers, technical papers and communication papers, and these categories are reflected in terms of the amount of time allocated for each of these presentations. Technical pre uh, papers get a 15 minute presentation slot followed by five minutes of questions and answers, while communications and also doctoral consortium papers are allocated 10 minutes for presentation and five minutes for questions and answers. Um, we also have our accessibility challenge today, which is one of the most interesting and fun sessions from the entire conference. Uh, and um, we will be able to vote for the delegates award. So stay tuned for that session when uh, the accessibility challenge chairs will explain uh, how voting for the award works and um, will uh, tell us a little bit more about the demos we are going to see um, as part of that session. The doctoral consortium session uh, was held on Sunday, 24th of April, uh, outside of the official Web for All program, but we will have a chance to see the two presentations from the participating students tomorrow. And now uh, another important announcement here um, that is highlighted in red. Um, tomorrow's program starts uh, with a word from our sponsor session. Uh, however, this session will not take place. Uh, instead uh, of this session, we will present information about our sponsors on the screen during the breaks. So what this means is that uh, on day two tomorrow, we will be starting at 10.15 instead of 9.30. Uh, we are going to uh, now update the website with this information. Uh, and please remember to not show up at 9.30 tomorrow, uh, but you can sleep in and show up at 10.15 instead. Um, we are really uh, lucky and honored uh, to have three wonderful keynote speakers. Today, the first keynote speaker, as I already mentioned, is Luz Rail uh, from Change Dyslexia and IE Business School. Uh, Right after our opening remarks, we will have a chance to hear, uh, to hear the talk. Uh, and she will talk about the research and the entrepreneurial journey behind Detective, which is a tool that combines machine learning and computer games to detect risk, to, uh, risk of dyslexia and ameliorate the symptoms of dyslexia through, through personalized exercises. So that's very, very exciting. Um, we also have Robin Christofferson as the last keynote session for today. Uh, he is from the UK tech charity AbilityNet and will discuss the mental 180 that we all need to undergo when it comes to considering accessibility in this complex hybrid working world, as well as exploring a more mature approach to embedding accessibility within every aspect of an organization. Since 2010, we invite well-regarded speakers from the accessibility community to address the conference delegates during dinner with a speech that always gives us food for thought. And this tradition was introduced in memory of Willem Loveborough, a longtime advocate for accessibility and inclusive design. This year, we have the incredible honor to have Julio Abascal from the University of the Basque Country to talk about web accessibility and beyond in e-government, where he will explore whether web accessibility can ensure accessibility to administration's websites. Since unfortunately we cannot hold the traditional web for all dinner, we will have this talk right after lunch tomorrow because 
there sh should be some proximity to food uh, during the Love Raw Memorial Address. Um, the traditional doctoral consortium took place yesterday, as already mentioned, uh, under the guidance of Sergio Machetti and James Cullen. We will also have the opportunity to hear short presentations from the participating students, William Payne and Lamello Makati. Uh, the accessibility challenge uh, is today. We will see short presentations and demos of software programs. Um, the session chairs are Xiaomei Wu and Uran O, oh, and they will explain that uh, we will all have the opportunity to vote for best demo and exactly how we can do that. Now, this is a particularly exciting moment where uh, we announce the nominees for best paper awards. Um, Intuit has been a proud sponsor of the Web for All conference since 2015 providing awards for the best technical and best communication papers, where nominees are determined by the aggregate reviewer scores and final selections by the programming and general chairs. This year's best communication paper nominees are the first nominee, teaching accessibility as a shared endeavor, building capacity across academic and workplace contexts. And the second nominee, optimizing the website accessibility conformance evaluation methodology. For best uh, technical paper uh, awards, the nominees are how and why we run, investigating the experiences of blind and visually impaired runners. And the second nominee is sound cells, designing a browser-based music technology for braille and print notation. Congratulations to all authors who have been nominated and the winners will be revealed during the closing remarks session at the end of the day tomorrow. So stay tuned for that one. Um, I would now like to give um, an opportunity for um, maybe some uh, questions if people have logistics question in the chat. Um, and also I wanted to give the floor um, to Dragon again, who will say a few words about um, how uh, you can reach out to us if you have any, you know, connectivity issues and need assistance and need help. I can summarize that <laughs> because I Thank caught you. Dragon off guard with this. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all. So thank you very much, Victoria. Um, we will be creating on our Slack channel, which we invite you to join. Um, I will just put back the slide just to give you uh, the direct link immediately. Um, so w4a22.slack.com. Uh, in there, we have created um, an accessibility um, help desk channel. So if by chance you have any connectivity issues with Whova and Zoom, please let us know there. Uh, we will be shortly posting uh, an email for um, contacting our online chairs and our student volunteers in order to have uh, um, a direct contact if by chance you have some connectivity issues for Whova or for our um, asynchronous conferencing platforms so Slack. So please be sure if you are not managing to um, connect, for example, Slack uh, or on Whova and you are directly right now connecting on Zoom, please let us know through these channels. Thank you, Dragon. Um, again, a reminder for everyone who is not presenting during the session to connect to the conference through Whova and everyone who is a presenter, they have uh, separate uh, access to the Zoom link. Um, do we have any questions about logistics or any of the information we shared so far? If not, I am going to give everyone 10 minutes uh, back from this session where we are going to have a short break. And in 10 minutes, we are going to start with the first keynote talk 
Uh, I don't want to start this talk any earlier than it is announced in the program because I'm sure that a lot of people uh, will be eager to connect on time to see the beginning. So I will see you all in 10 minutes right back here. In the meantime, please use the chat to ask any questions you might have. See you soon. Yes, Luz? I think that was, I was just... just clapping because of the presentation. <laughs> yeah. I was just clapping like, yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. If you by chance want to check uh, the sharing of uh, your presentation. Yeah, sure, no problem. Mm -hmm. There we go. I got it. Ooh. Now you can see it, right? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Yes. Let, let, let's check the, the sound, okay? Let's see if yes. you... If I have to be used. Here. El 40 de los estudiantes que fracasan it, right? en las yes. aulas. Okay. okay. We're Good. perfect. Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll see you in a few minutes then. I'm super excited. You know, this is the first conference that I presented uh, a paper uh, during my PhD. I mean, really? For me. Yes, yes. So, so that was, yeah. So, so I was like, oh my God, what for all? Oh my God, I cannot miss this. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I'm so it's not in person, you know, I really wish uh, we could see each other in person, really. Oh, I really wish that too. But honestly, mm -hmm. it was so easy when we uh, when we started discussing uh, who to invite for the keynote speeches and both Dragon and I were like, yep, Luz, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. It is, it's, it's, really, it's really a pleasure. It's really a pleasure. I mean, I'm... Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm coming back uh, to academia little by little um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, because, my God, this thing with change dyslexia is, has been very intense uh, and it's been very intense. Mm -hmm. And I really want to come back to academia and hopefully, I mean, I really hope I can go to work for all next year. I mean, this is this is one of my goals. I hope so. Well, yes. <laughs> we don't know where, where, where it's going to be, right? Because it's a secret, right? Until... It's a secret, yes. Uh, oh, and, and the okay. thing is that we can't get too excited this time because we got so excited about Lyon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we're now on Zoom. So, <laughs> But I, I honestly hope and I think next year it would be a very different story. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Hi, Lewis. So. This is Ted. Uh, I just want to say uh, I was also super excited when uh, you were defined as the, uh, the keynote speaker. Ted, it's so good to hear you. How are you? Oh my God. I'm doing great. Ted, okay, I mean, I can't wait to see you next year. And th yes. thank you for, for the, I mean, I, I think I think the sponsoring the best paper award, this is so cool, okay, from, from work for I think this this uh, this really encourages you know new students and new people to 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 you know to, to do their best uh, for it. So and look at one of those best papers this year about running. I mean, I yeah. love it when web for all has papers that are completely different topics. Hmm. Absolutely. Yes, <laughs> yes I, I mean, the, the field has evolved a lot. I mean, I was I was looking at the program uh, this year and I was like, oh my God. So first of all, I don't know almost no one. When some years ago, I used to know everyone. So that's the first thing. <laughs> so yeah. The topics have evolved a lot, yeah, Ted. I mean, this is uh, and, and and very. I mean, well, I I, I I honestly have in this field. I have the feeling that things are going, you know, that are advancing, and and that is that is super cool. 
I mean, Definitely, we are seeing such a such diverse set of papers and an influx of new authors, and I feel like every year it's getting, you know, harder and harder to to reject papers because the quality <laughs> is going up. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's definitely very good news for our community. So, uh, 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 Victoria, are you now in the, so you are uh, in, in the US and in the UK? You are now uh, where? I, in the I am in the US. I, I am only like affiliated to Wolverhampton okay. in name and in spirit. <laughs> 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 I'm an honorary research fellow there and because wow. we collaborate a lot still um, I have that uh, title but I'm fully in the US uh, okay. working for MBME yes okay wow. uh, <laughs> okay and, and that is also in the US I mean I just want to know I mean I'm in Spain right now okay yes so, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yes um, I'm from California still and you're you're there okay okay if hopefully next year we see each other in the same place and, mm -hmm. and Dragon is in Milan. I mean, you, you are in Milan. Well, I mean, the, your institution doesn't mean that you are there at this right moment, right? But um, this yes. right moment, I'm near Turin in a beautiful uh, literature themed bed and breakfast. As you can see, I have like a huge bookcase behind me. Yes. And it's all um, inside like mm -hmm. posters of Gabriel Garcia Marquez uh, and uh, Dorothy Parker and whatever, Hemingway. <laughs> Yeah. I thought I thought it was your home, uh, Draga. I thought that, that would have been that really cool, nice. That's cool. That cool. Uh, uh, book uh, shelf. Was, yeah. was Well, I'm in San Diego uh, oh, for nice. a different conference where I do that by day and I do web roll by night. Uh, so <laughs> that's uh, kind of like a superhero. <laughs> Sorry, I think this is the closest that we've actually been in a while because I'm in Palm Springs. Really? Oh, we should <laughs> catch up. We're yeah. within like 150 miles of each other. Wow. <laughs> nice. And by the way, we are getting close to the start time for the keynote. So get ready. Okay, okay. I think Luz was born ready. <laughs> she... uh, definitely. <laughs> No, 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 not anymore, not anymore. <laughs> I'm growing old. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Victoria, so the talk, I mean, I saw it is, it is uh, the, uh, uh, one hour. Uh, shall I uh, leave uh, 10 minutes for questions, right? Sure, yes. Okay. It's um, more or less 10 minutes. Don't, uh, don't worry too much. Hello, Ruth. I am uh, Julio. Julio. Julio, how are you? Well, and you? Uh, let me put my, okay, my camera on. Yeah. Okay. So it's a long time without seeing you. Are you okay? I'm okay. I'm okay, Julio. Little by little. <laughs> good. That's fantastic. So it's good to find you here. Yeah. I, I was. But I was. Very... Any, we live quite uh, close. We cannot uh, see each other here in Spain, so it's necessary to go to the network. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am now retired, so I I uh, am uh, traveling very much, very frequently to Madrid. So maybe we can see each other next time I visit Madrid. Julio, next time you're visiting Madrid, please uh, drop me a line. I mean, uh, I, I, this is a must, okay? <laughs> I can, I can. No, I'm really glad that you are, congratulations on, on your retirement. Congratulations on your retirement, Julio. This is, uh, I mean, I, know, I was not convinced, but you know, it's a, you can it's something you cannot avoid. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it with uh, some, um, you know, humor. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I have a new nephew, so uh, and, and a grandson. So I'm very I did, did, devoted to him. So it's a uh, <laughs> 
I change it very much my <laughs> focus. <laughs> okay, I'm afraid that this is near to the beginning of your conference, so I'm very happy you to uh, present the, this first conference. It uh, will be fantastic. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Julio. It's my pleasure. Also, thank you for being here also, for being connected. I mean, it's, 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 it's going to be a pleasure to present for you guys. I mean, it's, it, it means a lot. I think uh, I told you my first uh, paper during my PhD was in Wet for All. So I'm, I mean, I mean, I, I'm, I couldn't miss this opportunity of sharing uh, with you the last uh, the last years of, of it wasn't research okay but the last years of, of development let's say so that's, so that's why we're so interested in it because in it, <laughs> because it wasn't the classic you know research <laughs> paradigm but um, yeah, it's very so, hard work <laughs> okay. and, and Sylvia is there I see Sylvia there okay this is, this is so nice <laughs> so hi Lou. how about yes Sorry to interrupt. Um, so to kick off the official program with the keynote, uh, I'm sure that so many of us know Luz uh, probably very, very well, but we also have some newcomers and for their benefit, I would like to introduce Luz formally as our first keynote speaker for web for all 2022. Um, Luz does not need an introduction, really, because her work and achievements are known to many. Um, she has done tremendous work to help those with dyslexia get access to an earlier diagnosis and has developed numerous exercises to ameliorate the symptoms of dyslexia. Luz has a master's degree in computational linguistics and a PhD in human computer interaction uh, from the University of Pompeo Fabra in Spain. She is currently an assistant professor in the Department of Information Systems and Technology at IE Business School, as well as founder and CEO of Change Dyslexia. She has won numerous awards, among which are the Princesa de Girona Award, Forbes 30 under 30 list, or the MIT Technology Review Top 35 Innovators under 35. Change Dyslexia was recently awarded by the UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize for wow. the use, I know, <laughs> for the use of ICT in education. Um, Luz is the author of numerous scientific publications that have inspired many, including myself, and a book on dyslexia published in two editions. Now, without further ado, I will give the floor to Luz, who will tell us about the research and the entrepreneurial journey behind the development of the tool Detective. Luz, thank you, thank you so much. Over Victoria. to you. <laughs> thank you so much, Victoria. Thank you so much for the invitation, Victoria Dragan and the Steering Committee. Thank you, Sylvia, for being here, Julio, and and for everyone. I mean, congratulations on the organization on 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 a conference. Uh, I mean on work for all uh, i knew the organization is hard i know by you know by experience and 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 i'm very excited to be here and welcome to everyone that i don't know in person and uh well this is my opportunity to share with you what we have been doing over the last 12 years okay so let's see it's going to be a a, a summary okay uh, uh I put it more as a, as a story, okay? So, so let's try, you know, let's try to, 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 to enjoy as much as possible. So, so yes, so today I'm going to, 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 to tell you, okay, the story, okay? The story behind detective. So how we brought the results, the research results that we did to, uh, to basically to the, to the real world until we, you know, reach the Spanish public schools, which I'm going to tell you how we did it, but it was, not easy as you can imagine. Okay, so the first thing is uh, is uh, to recap a little bit about dyslexia. Okay, so dyslexia is not what we are seeing on the screen. Okay, so people with dyslexia, I have dyslexia myself. People with dyslexia, we see things perfectly. Okay, we don't see letters, you know, going up, and that. we don't see this. Okay, we see things uh, perfectly. The problem with dyslexia is this: is that when we want to map the letter with the sound okay this phonological component of language uh, 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 this there is a problem there okay so it's a, it's a problem of mapping graphing with morph morphing or letter with sound okay 
so uh, it has been uh, uh, at this moment, I mean, the, the, the definition of dyslexia has evolved over the years. At this right moment, it is defined as a specific learning disorder, okay? So it has a neurological origin, it's much more frequent as, 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 as I mean, it's very frequent, it's around 10% of the population, and it has not to do with, you know, with visual, I mean, it has to do with phonological component. So now, I'm going, uh, I'm going to tell you, okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you this story and for this, uh, what I selected uh, for this talk is, uh, is, is are the, I'm going to select three, um, three uh, main research results, okay, that have led us to this, okay, so uh, there were many results through the years, but I just selected three, okay, to tell this story, okay, and I think they are the most important ones. So the first research result, okay, come from the first four years of work, and this research result are is that errors, okay, are valuable, okay, that the errors written by people with dyslexia are valuable, okay, and let's see how we found this out, okay. So this started in 2010, okay, this started uh, uh, in University Pompeu Fabra, during my PhD, we were like, oh my god, we want to know how people online read on and write online, we want to know, you know, you know, how, how, how to improve the accessibility of people with dyslexia online, and this is the time where uh, I actually started publishing, uh, well, my first publications, and after starting publishing in, in web for all, okay, and these are the first, the first four years, so, so here you have, you know, how we, you know, try to find participants, it was very hard, okay, this very beginning of finding participants, and Actually, the first paper, okay, in my life was in W4A, okay, in Web for a conference. And here you have one of the slides that I use. So here uh, was like of, of estimating uh, dyslexia in the web, okay? How, I mean, uh, what was the percentage of users with dyslexia based on the errors that people with dyslexia write? Okay, and while we were uh, while we were uh, analyzing these errors and finding out the errors, we um, we uh, we made different experiments. Okay, we made different experiments using eye tracking technique, and some of the experiments were you know just with different font sizes, with different you know with different uh, uh, font uh, font colors, font types. Okay, just to find you know the perfect the perfect layout for people with dyslexia layout that you know improve their their, 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 their readability. But in one of the experiments, which uh, you community, I don't think I present this in, in W4, in one of the experiments, we, uh, we wanted to find out how people with dyslexia read text that had errors. Okay, so we present a text with a little amount of errors. We present a text like this one, okay, with jumbled letters. And what we found out, and this is the original recording, okay, for a, 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 for a person with dyslexia reading, what we found out, I'm sorry, it's in Spanish, but you know, the, the participants were Spanish. Can you see this video? Let, let me put it again. Can you see, okay, these are the fixations, okay, for people with dyslexia. Do you see that the fixations there are longer, okay, in the, so these fixations that are longer are in the, in the, in the words that have errors, okay? And we found longer fixations, okay, that means a larger cognitive load in people with dyslexia and in people without dyslexia, meaning that people with dyslexia were seeing the errors as people without dyslexia. The point was that in the question afterwards, when we ask whether, you know, whether there were errors in the text, people with dyslexia said that there weren't errors in the text. Are you following me? So they consciously were not seeing the errors, okay? While people without dyslexia, like, you know, standard readers, they were seeing the errors, okay? But if we go to the eye tracking data, both populations were seeing the errors. Now, if we go to the comprehension, what happens there? If we go to the comprehension, we can see that people without dyslexia, when the text has no errors, the comprehension starts very high. Then when the text starts having errors, the, compre the comprehension starts decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. And then when the text is 50% errors, like the previous text that you have seen, like this one has 50% of errors, okay? Then the comprehension goes up again. What happens with people with dyslexia. There's no, I mean, there, there's a slight difference, but there's no significant differences in between the comprehension of the text. So it doesn't matter if the text has errors, it doesn't matter if the text has little amount of errors, if the text has a lot of errors, people with dyslexia, they don't care. We don't care, okay? We read the text <laughs> regardless of the errors. So 
but we see them, but the errors, you know, do, do, do not have an impact on our comprehension. So, so this, this result was very striking, okay? Uh, 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 it was very striking and actually, because we couldn't believe it, we repeated the experiment, okay? So this was the only, actually, this was the only condition where we found out that actually people with dyslexia were reading better than people without dyslexia, because when we had 60% of errors, as you have seen there, the comprehension of people with dyslexia was higher. This made me think that maybe there was something interesting about the errors written by people with dyslexia, okay? We were like, oh my God, there has to be something there, okay? So at the end, what we did, we started, you know, calling all the people who participated in the experiment and we said to, to mainly, mo they were mostly mothers, okay, of, of the children with dyslexia, we were saying, okay, bring us the errors of your children, okay, bring us all these things, okay, that that uh, that your children uh, have written, okay, because I want to analyze these errors from a linguistic point of view, okay, because I, my minor is in linguistics, okay, so it's like I really want to analyze these errors from a linguistic point of view because I have the intuition that something is going to be there, and then we collected a, a over a thousand of errors, okay? We also had the collaboration of Jennifer Pedler, she's in the UK. She also gave us errors written by children with dyslexia in English, okay? So we repeated a, a, this analysis for English and for Spanish. And what we found was the following. And this is the striking, what I think is, you know, the main result is that we found patterns in the errors of people with dyslexia. So, the same as we have, you know, in every language we have a grammar and we follow rules. People with dyslexia, we follow, I mean, we don't follow rules, but we have, you know, we follow, we follow patterns when we make errors, okay? So before this, we thought that people with dyslexia, we made errors randomly, okay? It was like, well, you know, more or less look alive, blah, blah, blah. But then, if we go deep into the into 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 this linguistic analysis, we found that there were some patterns there. Okay, there were some patterns that we could say that there were some phonetic patterns. So the more uh, phonetic um, the more uh, uh, phonetic features that each of the phonemes okay share, they are more likely okay to be. Uh, to be mistaken, okay? And also the more um, uh, visual features, let's say, okay, that, that the letters share, the more likely are there to be uh, mistaken. And if we do this for English and for Spanish, what we see is that the distribution of the different types of errors are also similar, meaning that Okay, we know that dyslexia is universal, right? But the manifestation of, of dyslexia depends from language to language. But if we go too deep into the into the patterns of the errors, what we found is that there are some similarities, okay, in between English and Spanish, which are very different languages. Okay, so why this is these results are so important? Because this this uh, this taught us something from dyslexia that we didn't know before okay this taught us uh, uh, this uh, taught us that there were patterns okay inside uh, inside uh, inside these errors and these patterns you know this is what everything in machine learning what you know what you love okay if you find patterns then you know, in computer science, you can start, you know, doing doing things. And, and, and these, these patterns actually gave us information about uh, dyslexia that at that point we didn't know before. So what do we do with this? So what we did, we integrated these patterns into uh, into games, okay? Uh, I did this with two friends, with Clara Bayari and Azuki Gorriz. And we integrated this in a game that at that point was called dyslexia, uh, piruletras, this, uh, this, uh, this, um, uh, 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 and uh, uh, so what, what was, so in this game, the children were prompted with a mistake, okay? And they had to solve the mistake, okay? But this mistake, this, this, um, this, um, this word that they were prompted with the mistake, okay? integrated a linguistic pattern, okay, a linguistic pattern that we found in the errors inside, okay? So we translated this into English and into German with also with the help of Maria Rauschenberger, okay, that, that, that she's uh, collaborating in web all conference. And uh, this game started started to be to be downloaded. We, we, uh, we made an evaluation, okay, in a school in Barcelona back in 2014. And what we found is that children improve significantly their uh, uh, spelling skills. Only their spelling skills. Later on, we improve this, okay? So, so that is. So, but 
we learn a very hard lesson the hard way. And is that we put this game out there, many people were downloading this, it was being used in over 70 countries. What happened there? What happened is that we didn't have a proper you know, business model there, okay? This was not sustainable. And then the more users that we have, basically the more problems that we had because we were all volunteers. So if uh, if uh, we had new phones with a new, um, you know, with a new screen, we needed, you know, to create new graphics. If we have technical problems, you know, we had no technical support, if we have you know questions from people we didn't have a, a user support so we learned the hard way that we needed to have like an organization behind this you know to make this sustainable okay so after you know after let's call it after this being successful okay many people were using it we we couldn't sustain it okay and we had to you know to close it okay so that was the first discovery okay let's see now the second discovery okay the second discovery is about screening dyslexia so the second discovery is if we mix these patterns okay that we found in the errors written by people with dyslexia these patterns that gave us information about dyslexia that we didn't know before if we mix this with a machine learning model okay we are able okay to risk to screen sorry risk of dyslexia let's see how we did this okay how we reach to this so this is the next four years, okay? This happened in Carnegie Mellon University uh, in 2014 from 2018. So yeah, I was there with, uh, I was in the Jeff Bigans group, okay? As you can see there, you also know, many of you, you also know Jeff, he's fantastic. And what happened is that uh, this was not easy, guys, okay? This was not easy. So what happened is that um, we had, um, a, 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 I mean, I was offered a job there and I was like, oh my God, screening dyslexia is the most difficult thing, you know, and now that I am at Carnegie Mellon University, I'm going to try to do it, you know, because this is like the most difficult thing. Okay. And we started, oh my God, we did so many experiments and we found nothing. Okay. And I mean, nothing. I mean, we did experiments that, uh, you know, taking into account how people with and without dyslexia play chess online. We made experiments of, of how, you know, how we use different colors, how we do, it was so hard. We didn't find it. And then at some point in, a, in, a, in one day it was like ah no one day no it was actually in, in in w4a okay in w4a 2015 okay we were presenting you know how eye tracking results could be used you know to screen dyslexia the problem is that eye tracking you cannot bring an eye tracker you know uh, to every school okay and it was in 2015 after this presentation in in that in, in w4a where uh, i was like hold on a second we have a lot of data there and we have a lot of data from the games okay from children with dyslexia why don't we use these games that you see here okay that were used by actually 32,000 users okay why don't we take into account you know this data find out which are the exercises that are more challenging for people with dyslexia because they integrate their patterns and apply you know and make an experiment to see if we can find significant differences so so this this picture okay was taken while, while we were taking this conversation in a w4a conference okay in a web for our conference and for the first time in two years of doing experiments, we found the first significant differences among groups, okay? So with Abdullah Ali, that he's there, with Jeff Began, who is there, what we did, we integrated in, in a very uh, small set of, 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 of games, okay? These patterns, okay, these linguistic patterns, okay? From the analysis of the previous game and from the analysis of, of errors that we had. And uh, we did, uh, we ran a little study for English and for Spanish and what we found is that, and uh, it was published in, in Web4R in 2016, by the way, what we found is that, the, that, you know, that there were differences among groups. So, and here is the first lesson, okay, if any of you want to start, you know, uh, building a startup or something, is like, you can start relying on descriptive statistics at the very beginning, okay, because the small descriptive statistics actually can help you a lot. I mean, you don't need to build a very big matching learning model, I mean, a you don't need to, to invest a lot of time and money before if you, you know, if you can make little statistical tests. And this is what happened to us, okay? So we run a little statistic test. I mean, this is what you have. There is a Wilcox test and we could see, you know, a, a significant differences among groups. And it was like, okay, 
and I'm, um, I met my uh, Jeff, who was the head of the group. I was like, Jeff, 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 I got, I got, I got it here. Okay. Finally, I think I found out what uh, if we apply, you know, if, if we run a big, uh, uh, a big experiment, you know, I think, I think we can uh, screen dyslexia, right, with using machine learning. And then, and then Jeff was like, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, how many uh, uh, participants do you need? I was like, woof. <laughs> If we, run, I mean, we need uh, we need thousands, okay, or a couple of thousands at least uh, participants. You know, I was like, well, this is, I mean, you you run this with, I think this was seven uh, sixty users. I mean, finding one thousand participants is going to be, it's going to be difficult. So at the end, what we did is like, okay, I'm going for it. Okay, let's let's try to 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 to, to get you know to to gather thousands of of participants, and uh, we started like a social movement okay uh, and at the end we reach uh, we reach the media and now i'm going to put you a video it has captions in english okay uh, a video that uh, uh, is from the spanish news that was released in spain and in south america asking for participants for this research el 40% de los estudiantes que fracasan en las aulas tienen dislexia y muchos de ellos no lo saben. Para ayudar a detectarla, Luz Enrello, la mejor investigadora europea 2013 y disléxica, ha creado un programa informático. Son unos ejercicios muy sencillos que para que lleguen a los colegios necesitan la participación ciudadana. Tenía muchas faltas de ortografía y la profesora me decía que estaba mal y entonces yo tenía un poco de frustración. También había profesores que me decían, eh, se dirigían a mí como la niña que tenía dislexia. Es el día a día de los estudiantes con dislexia. Para ellos dicen la escolaridad es un infierno. María lo sabe bien. Sus seis hijos tienen esta dificultad con alto componente genético para aprender a leer y a escribir. El desconocimiento. No hay una detección temprana. Los profesores no están formados, no hay metodologías acordes a estos niños. El 40% de los estudiantes que dejan la escuela tienen dislexia. Si un niño no sabe leer y la lectura es uno de los principales medios para transmisión de conocimientos, el fracaso escolar está asegurado. Otro problema, muchos no lo saben y otros empiezan a sospechar cuando ya suspenden demasiado tarde. Por eso Luz, mejor investigadora europea 2013, ha creado estos juegos que podrían detectar dislexia nada más empezar el curso. Ahora tienen un 82% de fiabilidad y subiendo. Para poder subir ese porcentaje y hacer un algoritmo realmente fiable que pueda detectar dislexia en los colegios necesitamos participación masiva de todas las familias con niños con dislexia y de todas las personas con dislexia del mundo hispánico. Solo hay que entrar en cualquiera de estas páginas y participar. Cuantas más personas jueguen, la herramienta será más eficaz. Entonces esta idea, sin ánimo de lucro, podría llegar a las aulas. So what you have what you have seen there, okay, was the, the call, okay, that we did it for people, okay, uh, uh, to try to join uh, to join the study. So the following morning after this was released in Spain, in South America, in 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 the, in the news, okay, uh, I had finally thousands of emails of my in my inbox, okay, which was great, but at the same time we need to handle that. So it took me like you know, like a year, almost two years, okay, to, you know, to, to 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 put all this in order, and if I can give you. Uh, another another uh, uh, another uh, lesson that that I learned, okay, is that uh, and now that I've seen after one is that it's very important, okay, to build a community, okay, when you are when you are doing uh, research, okay, because during these years while people were you know were were participating, we we built a community. I mean, we didn't know we were doing this, but but we did, and and this was very important for later on, okay, to 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 know you know how you know, how to build the best product on how to, you know, how to meet uh, their needs, okay? So, after a lot of work, okay, uh, we gathered almost 5,000 participants for 62 schools and 22 centers, three universities, 11 associations of dyslexia and four foundations. So, at that point, I started to be a little bit afraid, you know, I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, this is becoming something big, I mean, what if, you know, what if I do it wrong, okay? So, at that point, uh, uh, something that helped me a lot was uh, building a, 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 a this called a, a cross-functional team. Okay, so uh, uh, so dyslexia touch uh, many fields. Okay, so I was like, okay, I want the, the best senior people from each of these fields. Okay, <laughs> to be there, so I make sure that I don't make many mistakes. Okay, so from data mining and machine learning, I had Ricardo Baeza Yates, Jeff Vegan, Enrique Moreno uh, the, uh, from psychology and pediatrics. 
Nancy Cashin White, Miquel Serra, and other doctors, okay, that are very well known, okay, in, in dyslexia. Linguistics, then I had professional therapists to make sure, you know, that, you know, that this was okay, okay, in, in, uh, in their field, uh, uh, civil associations, you know, so basically the different stakeholders, okay, that, uh, that dyslexia uh, touches, okay, to make sure that what we were doing made sense, okay, and this, putting all these people, you know, um, Making all these people agree was probably more difficult, okay, that um, uh, that's actually conducting the research, okay. But this uh, paid off, okay, because because this actually helped a lot, okay, to to, to, to build something that makes sense, okay, for uh, and to build something that added value, okay, for the different stakeholders, okay. So uh, uh, this was published in, 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 in PLOS One, okay? So basically what we had at the end, uh, after cleaning the data, we had a little bit over uh, uh, 4,000 participants. We have uh, less than, than uh, four, uh, 200 features. And then we, have, I mean, we tested many models, but at the end with random forest, we had the, 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 the I mean, we had the, 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 the best results and also a little bit uh, of interpretability because we needed there. I mean, we started uh, using a deep learning but then we needed you know to give explanations okay to the users I mean and, and at the end we, we end up using a random forest and uh, and uh, in the I mean we, we applied the 10 cross validation because we have you know a, a small data and we did this for computer and also uh, in, uh, in the last years for tablets, for a tablet, okay, with uh, 1,300 uh, extra participants uh, for tablet, okay. And what we found is that we have uh, a recall in the class of dyslexia of around 80%, uh, which is decent, okay, for if we compare this to the rest of the screeners. Okay, and here you have the paper. Okay, now. We didn't want to make the same mistake that we did in the past. Okay, so you remember that we had, you know, this application that was used by a lot of people, but then it died. Okay, because you know, because we didn't have, you know, the proper infrastructure. This time we were like, no, we're doing things right. So what we did, we the, we launched a Kickstarter campaign. Okay, uh, uh, so the lesson here for myself, it was like, okay, do not only think of social impact, also think of sustainability. So in this case, we wanted you know, to build a, a startup, okay? A social startup, because this is a social venture, okay? That actually, that can integrate these research results in a sustainable way to uh, put them back into the, into the society. So we did this Kickstarter campaign. Uh, it was a, with a lot of work, it was a success, okay? We finally reached our goal, which was uh, 30,000 uh, uh, euros. Uh, and with that, I could pay, you know, a team, okay, that would, you know, develop this as a real tool, okay? Not, not, not as a, uh, uh, not, not, not with mainly volunteers. So uh, we launched a detective, okay, that integrated uh, this this test okay for um for um uh, to a screen dyslexia so here you see you know how detective uh, looks uh, from the inside and then at some point I started you know to meet uh, uh, different companies okay to 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 to, to try the different corporations okay to try to help us uh, with detective okay with the launch so we met different corporations and at some point I met uh, Samsung okay Samsung Spain okay this um uh, 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 so here you have um, a picture of, of 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 the of the kickoff meeting that that we have super nice people and and I was like oh my god we need to launch this I mean this is and 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 it was very funny because um, my hair was uh, blue at that time, and it was exactly the blue of Samsung. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, and it was a total coincidence. But I told him in the meeting, "No, you know this hair blue. I'm super fan of Samsung." And anyway, so and uh, uh, so we made an agreement, and the agreement was, "Yeah, Victoria is laughing." No, this was, I mean, this this meeting. It was crazy, okay. <laughs> so I was like, I need to go out. I mean, I really need you know to 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 to, to get this anyway. So the 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 agreement was like uh, we will launch the application together, okay. And for one year, the application is going to be called Detective for Samsung, okay. A, a in exchange of a communication campaign. So they did a communication campaign that was you know good for dyslexia, but. In our application, they had the name Samsung in there. And 
I'm going, you know, to put you the one of the spots. They created different spots. Okay, these spots were in the cinemas, were in the TV. Then, um, well, I'm going to put you one of the spots that that uh, that they launch. Okay, it's again a caption in English. Okay. <laughs> Andaba David muy hambriento, muy bien. Lucas, la siguiente. Lucas, la siguiente frase. La siempre las nubes. Dislexia, dificultad en el aprendizaje de la lectura y la escritura que afecta a uno de cada diez niños. Detective for Samsung, la primera aplicación que detecta precozmente el riesgo de dislexia. And you have there, you know, you, you saw the, the logo. So, you will say, so this was, um, so yeah, this was big in Spain, okay? So, so this thing that you see here is, uh, is the main square of, of Spain. Uh, it has, I mean, it, it has uh, millions of views of YouTube. It can, and, and, and Samsung won a uh, can awards, a can awards. So basically, you know, this big festival of, of publicity, they even won an award with this, with this uh, campaign. And here you have a video of how this looks. This is like what times is work, okay? I don't know, I don't get it. So one of the lessons that we learned here, so this communication campaign, okay, this was wild, okay, uh, but what did we learn here? So people started downloading this, people started using this, and here you see the first visualization that we have of the test. And what happened is that people didn't trust the test, guys. I mean, it didn't matter if you had so much money put there with a communication campaign and so ever, okay? Because the results were put, you know, in, in as you as you see there, okay? It was like this star, uh, likewise. And what we found, I mean, and we put there a lot of information, okay? What was your orthography, your reading speed, your your reading, uh, your speed as writing, your how, how did you correct errors? How did you recognize errors? How did, did you comprehend? I mean, we put a lot of information there, but people couldn't understand it because of our machine learning model also was opaque. Okay, and then at some point, one year later, we were like, okay, okay, let's let's put this. You know, we are using random forest. We have a, 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 a I mean, we have we have this uh, this um, this confident score, and let's put here. You know how confident we are that you have risk or not risk of this. Let's say so. Basically, it looks like a regression. We gave in with this other visualization less information to the users, but people trust it more. Okay, so the lesson is. We need explainable machine learning algorithms. I mean, I know this is, you know, everyone speaks about it. Everyone speaks about transparency, about auditable algorithms, but I've seen this the hard way, okay? People need to, to see something that they trust also with the visualization. So, 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 yeah. Uh, and now, okay, so this was the second discovery. Okay, we, the first discovery was linguistic patterns in errors of people with dyslexia. The, sec the second discovery was screening dyslexia using these patterns and machine learning. And now we're going to see the third discovery that is dyslexia support or dyslexia treatment. Okay, so how to help people with dyslexia to, uh, to, 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 to perform better. Of course, this is not, you know, this is only one help, okay, that uh, professional therapists and people in schools can use. This is not like the solution. I mean, this is one thing that helps, okay? So what we did was, this was uh, also at the same time in between Carnegie Mellon and the last years was like, okay, you remember dyslexia, right? That people, children uh, uh, improve uh, their, their spelling skills. And I was like, hmm, they're improving their spelling skills because we're using errors that people with dyslexia write. And because we are only targeting, you know, spelling. Why if we use other types of exercises that instead of targeting only spelling targets the rest of cognitive skills that we can actually, you know, somehow uh, measure or somehow gather, okay, using uh, computer games. So uh, we took into account the different performance measures that you see there, like reading speed, reading comprehension, uh, spelling, error recognition, error correction. Now you know why we're using error recognition, okay? We, because people with dyslexia, you know, we're not able to, to recognize their errors. We have uh, different types of working memory, perceptual, perceptual processes like visual and auditory discrimination, academic 
categorization. This is crucial, okay? When, 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 when speaking about dyslexia, of course, different language skills. You know, like all these, you know, uh, alphabetic, phonological, syllabic, lexical, morphological, syntactic. So basically, you know, the different levels, okay, of, of linguistics, okay, orthographic and prosodic, and then different types of ex executive functions. Executive functions are, are very important in learning, and there are many different executive functions, okay. Here, we could only focus in attention, okay, because are the ones that, you know, that we could gather, okay, with the exercises. So with this, at the end, uh, instead of having uh, 5,000 exercises, okay, that, that we had at the beginning, uh, we had, 40,000 exercises. So yes, uh, there was very long uh, winters, okay, in Pittsburgh, okay, to create these exercises. So this is when I created most of them, okay. And and, uh, um, and then we launched, you know, this next version of Detective, okay, that uh, includes not only the screening test, but also the exercises, you know, to, to, help, um, uh, to help people. So uh, we made a, a we made an evaluation of these exercises in four schools in Madrid, and we found uh, uh, we we did with a pretest and with a post test using a official diagnosis of dyslexia, and we found that uh, children with dyslexia improve not only in reading but also in writing and also in the risk of having. Uh, dyslexia. Okay, I don't have the slide for that because this was a keynote talk. I, I wanted to make it, uh, you know, not, not so dense. But uh, but but we um, we did this evaluation, and oh, and now it starts, you know, the this this very thing. So in 2016, there were 40 schools that you know try to make a pilot, you know, to 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 try to test it in 2019. So after three years of working very hard with public schools and. With you know, with 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 the government here in Spain, they decided to try this in 1,000 uh, 100 schools. Sorry, in Madrid public schools. Last year, 2021, we went from 100 to 400 schools. So this involved Madrid and also the south of Spain uh, public schools, and hopefully, no. So this year we are in over for uh, sorry, 800 schools and hopefully next year, hopefully fingers crossed, okay, uh, 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 detective will be available in every uh, public school in Madrid, which is up to 1,200 schools. So we're getting ready for that. Um, uh, 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 public institutions are very uh, strict and then they're very uh, exigent. They're very, um, I mean, they, they have very high standards. They expect, you know, you know, everything to, to, to be perfect. So we will see. Uh, so another lesson, okay, that that, le that I learned here because we we tried with many things. Okay, we didn't uh, we did not only try with public institutions. We tried with public uh, with private schools. We tried with professional therapists. We tried with families. We tried with civil associations. We tried with with um, with uh, with uh, with the um, uh, with uh, with corporations also as Samsung. I mean, we tried with many with many resources. Oh, by the way, the Samsung uh, thing was also done in Argentina. Okay, Samsung Argentina uh, 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 did this uh, also in their country. So what we so one lesson that I learned here is that at the end, if you really want to maximize your social impact, the way you maximize it is to collaborate with policymakers and with public institutions, at least in countries like Spain, because this is the way that you reach you know, the majority of, 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 of the people. And if you go to public schools, public schools are the ones that have less resources in Spain. If you go to public school is actually when you are doing, you know, when you're doing the, when you're making the greatest impact, okay? Because at the end, private schools have the resources, okay? To deal with dyslexia, they have professional therapies, it's, it's but when you go to public schools, it's different. So now I'm going. Okay, I'm going to explain you in three minutes what is change dyslexia. Okay, so 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 in what is change dyslexia? So basically, our dream in change dyslexia, our goal in change dyslexia is to put science. Okay, for dyslexia. Okay, so basically here you have the main theme of change dyslexia in this in this picture. And our goal is basically you know that this that there is no child that is left behind because of this list and here you have two girls okay and this is what we do we try you know to lift them you know there is nothing you know that that that, that, that can stop you you know not on not dyslexia and at this point there are three main barriers okay of dyslexia the first barrier is that dyslexia is a hidden disorder okay most of the people that have dyslexia do not know that they have dyslexia for that what have we done for that 
we have uh, we have uh, give detective is totally for free okay so everyone okay who wants to have a free screener of dyslexia okay for spanish can actually access it and at this point uh, over uh, three uh, three hundred fifty thousand people okay have used the test detective uh, worldwide okay the second uh, barrier are actually the uh, sorry are the literacy difficulties okay because of having dyslexia okay you have you know you you, you i mean you are you you have more risk of having a school failure and uh, uh, you know so uh, and your your spelling and, and your and your writing uh, you know is 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 um i mean you 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 have issues with that for that we have developed okay the second part of the technique okay okay this treatment part okay to support dyslexia and uh, and uh, this is sell, sold at a price okay for public institutions so with these sales we keep the screener for free and we tackle the third barrier the third barrier are the socioeconomical barriers okay because overcoming dyslexia is expensive okay you need a diagnosis you need treatment it's very expensive and what we do for that we uh, provide scholarships okay for uh, families uh, uh, for children with dyslexia that cannot afford uh, detective. So we have provided at this moment over 400 scholarships, okay, in Spain and South America. And here you have a school uh, in Medellin that uh, have a, school, a detective uh, a scholarship. And here you have the main countries that are receiving scholarships from Chase Dyslexia. So, uh, yes, so we have uh, received a number of awards. Also, W4A awards, okay, the demo award, I remember. And as as um, as uh, Victoria uh, mentioned, uh, probably the one that uh, we are, you know, very proud of is this UNESCO uh, award. I cannot, I really cannot say the name of the award. Okay, Victoria can say this better than me. And uh, and it was the first time that uh, that actually a Spanish institution uh, received uh, this award, okay, from from UNESCO. So we are very proud of this, and we will receiving this next June because of the pandemic we could not receive this in person but next year we are going to Paris to UNESCO okay to receive uh, this award so all this is based on publications okay so we have uh, yet to book one patent field and uh, and uh, well and beautiful and uh, incredible uh, co-authors okay from different institutions and and I'm, i can't wait okay to go back to academia so hopefully keep publishing i mean start publishing again i mean this is something of of, of my dreams okay and yeah and i'm finishing the presentation and, and i want to finish with this okay so yeah how lucky i mean and some people mention, no, you were in the right place in the, at the right time. Guys, no, I was in every place at every time, okay? This is how uh, this was built, okay? It was, you know, all of us, I mean, every member of the team, we were in every place in at every time, you know, traveling a lot, you know, putting everything there. We tried a lot of stuff that was not successful, okay? And let me give you, uh, let me give you some tips, okay, of, of, I mean, of how it was. So at the very beginning, it was very difficult to find participants, okay? The four, the four first years, I was just, you know, looking for participants. And you know how many schools are in Spain? There are 6,000 schools. You know why I know this? Because I wrote them, okay? I wrote each of these schools, okay? And, 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 and Google cuts you, you know, the, 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 <laughs> your email, your Gmail account, if you start writing a lot of emails, okay? Because they think you are a robot, okay? And this happened to me twice. I mean, they got my Gmail account for this because of writing, you know, all these schools to try, you know, that for them to participate and they didn't respond, okay? So, so, the, so, so this is very hard. You need to, to do your best, you know, especially at the beginning. Also, we only know success stories. This, what you have seen, okay, it can be seen as a success story, but listen, you've seen here three experiments that had significant results, but at least we made, we made like 17 experiments, okay, before this. And, and it was very long winters. It was, it was, it was very tough, okay, to, 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 to finally get this. So, so something that dyslexia taught me, and maybe you know some people with disabilities here can also uh, can also relate, is that 
we don't care if we fail, right? We try again, we try again, we try again because we're used to this. Okay, we're used to you know we're used to we're used to failing and we're used to you know try again, try again, try again. And and this was probably one of the tricks of change dyslexia was that okay, it doesn't work, okay, let's try again. It doesn't work, okay, let's try again. It doesn't work, okay, let's try again. And this is this was you know this is what happened for the last um, two years. Okay, so 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 the, so if, if you try something and if you fail or if it doesn't work, look, don't worry. I mean it didn't work for me for over 10 times okay so 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 that is and the last thing is that a, a, a that this might look that it was my dream okay because because i have dyslexia but actually this this idea okay of applying uh, of applying research to dyslexia was not even mine it was from my phd advisor okay ricardo Baeza was the one who was like hey why don't you apply you know uh, uh, your research to to help people like you and and so what i mean is that it doesn't matter if you don't have a, a passion, okay? Or if you have a passion, follow it. I mean, you're very lucky. But if you don't have it, it doesn't matter. I mean, the, 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 just, just try to do the things the best you can and, 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 and you will find, you know, you will find your passion while, while working. It was my case, okay? But, but uh, pay, I, think, I mean, this was not, not my idea. I was not closing a cycle, nothing. I mean, it was just, just something that I started to work and, and that I find that it was, you know, uh, 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 right, and and that is okay. So we have uh, uh, fifteen uh, minutes for questions. If, if you have uh, any question, and it was, uh, I mean, let me finish with this. It, it is such a pleasure, okay, to share this with W four A community. Okay, as I mentioned, my first very first paper in 2011 okay was here okay about uh, that uh, it was uh, about estimating uh, dyslexia okay users of dyslexia in the web and i'm very well uh, I, I i was very honored by by this invitation I, I couldn't believe it it was like oh my god oh my god oh my god and and i hopefully uh, hopefully next year i can you know i can join you guys as, as, a, as a researcher i mean this is one of my dreams i mean the point is that leading this is actually much more time consuming as one would I mean, as I would ever expect, okay? But, um, but uh, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity for, for, for sharing this with, with you researchers. I really admire your, your, your work and it's an honor to, to share with you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Luz. This was amazing. It was, I knew so much of this already and I was absolutely captivated by hearing again, uh, hearing it again and, you know, hearing really about the entrepreneurial journey behind it. So, uh, you know, you, in the papers you read about the research, but you don't know what goes behind, you know, you know, <laughs> bringing this to the public and making the, the difference in the social impact that, that you did. Um, the floor is open for questions from everyone. Please don't be shy. This is a unique opportunity uh, to ask any questions. Uh, you actually answered one of my questions, which was uh, if you are a young researcher, a PhD student who is just starting in the field of accessibility, one of the biggest barriers for all of us is how to find participants. Um, and I actually remember speaking to you when you came to Wolverhampton, when you told me this story of how your phone number was everywhere. And it really inspired me to find more people with autism uh, for my research, where I was yeah, <laughs> going through a very similar process. Um, the next thing that uh, I was wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about was the importance of the using, using interpretable models. Uh, for this and how it, this interacted with, uh, you know, the mistrust that you mentioned people initially had and the lack of confidence in the results. Uh, so you mentioned that, uh, you know, having that confidence score uh, displayed uh, on a scale uh, was actually more successful than providing information about how interpretable the model was. Yes. Yes, yeah, so 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 this this was um, I, I think there was a, I mean th there's many factors okay that 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 um, that uh, that play uh, that that play um, a role here. So the first factor is that I think uh, five years ago, yeah five yeah five yeah five years ago, a, a artificial intelligence or machine learning was seen more as a as a magic thing that now now people are more used to it. Okay, so so this was like the first. It is still, I mean, it's, this, it's the first uh, test uh, for for dyslexia that mixes machine learning in Spanish. So people were they, they were reluctant, 
okay of, of what you know of what to expect so so the first thing was the, and they were also like professional therapists were also afraid okay because this was like some kind of a threat okay for their job so 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 yeah so the very the, the first years were very hard um so 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 I think it was a mix of three things, okay? So the mix of artificial intelligence was too new to society. Uh, people were seeing this as a threat. And also, the result, I mean, we could not interpret the results because at the beginning we had, um, I mean, we had a, 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 a neural network, okay? And we had a yes, no. And then if someone asked us why is no, because it's yes. And I was like, <clears throat> I don't know either, okay, <laughs> because this is this is how it works in, in machine learning, you know. I mean it, and, and they couldn't because they didn't know, I mean they couldn't just because people are used to, you know, a test, are used to, you know, measures, are used to at least in, in dyslexia diagnosis, you know, you are used to the performance is, you know, related to the to the result. And in, in this case, when you use machine learning, sometimes performance is not related to the result. Okay. So, I mean, when there is an error, yeah, there is an error. It's not like, you know, a little here, little, no, there is a, it's a full error. So, so at the beginning, at, at the end, it was like, okay, we, we need to give, we somehow need to give an explanation here. So at the end, uh, what we did uh, with Random Forest, uh, 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 it was more consistent that performance was related, you know, to just dyslexia or not dyslexia. And also with Random Forest, I mean, it's also very difficult to interpret, but at least, you could see a little bit, okay, of you know, some of the trees. You could see a little bit of, of how how this was done. So, so, so this is uh, this is um, yeah. This is this is at the end we decide to and, and and the visualization was crucial. The visualization with only a regression was crucial. So people were like, oh, I did wrong. I did a little bit wrong. Okay, this is why you know or something like that. So, so, so yes. Okay, I think Dragon is is is. Um, is, is is asking also i hope i hope yes I yes you did <laughs> Thank uh, you. Uh, so let me read that out so we have a question despite the more interpretable results does it happen that the users mistrust the results for example due to social stigma most probably yes Dragan. Uh, uh, there's i mean something that you learn when people start using things large scale is that there's many opinions there, <laughs> so there's many factors you cannot control. So, so most probably, yes. Uh, I think one thing is the stigma. Uh, yes, I, th I think I think yes. Uh, uh, but Ortez was very, I mean, was very conservative. Okay, when when saying, you know, whether I mean, we, we aim at a at a high recall. Okay, uh, so so even if it's a, sc a screener, it was very conservative. So most of the most of the um, of the problems came because children with dyslexia that had treatment were classified as not having dyslexia. These were the main problems. Because then they were like, oh, but my child has dyslexia. And now he says no. And, and now he cannot, you know, uh, how can mm -hmm. I teach people, you know, uh, to have these adaptations, you know, and so on. And it's like, well, if he's, you know, if he's receiving treatment, and it means that, you know, these pre 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 prerequisites okay for reading and writing he already you know acquired them and this is what we measure with detectives so this is why yeah that, that, those were the main problems and another question is so from here after you have plans to reach more public schools and to expand the organization um is there anything that you can share about research plans for the future? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, oh my God. Uh, so one thing that I would love, uh, I mean, um, we are, uh, uh, we're about to launch a detective uh, for uh, support English learning, but for people, for Spanish people okay, who are learning English, okay? So we, need, we will need to evaluate that. Another thing that, uh, that uh, I want to research, and, and and I've been saying this okay for years now, but I really want. I mean, I need to. I mean, hopefully at the end of this year, um, I'm, I'm finding a formula okay of of, of really coming back uh, to research as, as before. Um, uh, is to uh, uh, is to make uh, research on uh, dyslexia uh, strengths, okay? Because the and and, and actually this idea 
uh, uh, I got this idea from Cheko Asakawa. Okay, so so basically, uh, one of the doctor, uh, doctoral consortium, she was no, she was in the uh, in the accessibility challenge, right? Uh, so 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 Chiko Sakawa, uh, she, I mean, uh, for the people who don't know her, I mean, she works at at uh, IBM and and she's totally blind, and she has an extremely good sense of orientation and an extremely good hearing. Uh, Hearing, um, I mean, she's extremely good at hearing, and 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 I find Checo that she has superpowers. Okay, every time I meet Checo, I'm like, Checo has superpowers. You know, she she can see things that I cannot see, and 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 and, 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 and I am not in visual impaired, you know, but she can do that. So she could, you know, back in in, in Pittsburgh. I was with her and, and she could tell me, you know, that I was going into the wrong direction in the street, things like this. Okay. And 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 so 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 Checo made me, I mean, made me think that that we people with dyslexia also develop, I mean, by compensating, by compensating, uh, also develop some uh, some strengths. Okay. So the same way as a screen reader can, you know, can be super fast and people with uh, with visual uh, impairments can read faster than people without visual impairments okay so at the end they become you know super readers and they they you know they have uh, i i want to do something similar for dyslexia okay <laughs> so so i i i i, I would like to, um uh, to 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 do to do research on on the cognitive um strengths okay that people with dyslexia have that uh, that are Mainly related to uh, creativity, to thinking outside the box, and to uh, to visual uh, 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 visual thinking. Okay, and 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 you know uh, because we are used to define people of what do we lack, right? Okay, so 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 how diagnoses are they wrong? I mean, it's we are defined of how do we lack? Okay, I have this is because I lack of this. I am visual impaired because I lack of it, and I would like to. To at some point, you know, to define, you know, people of how we excel, you know, on things, you know, so like the, the other way around. So, so, so I would like to do. Um, uh, uh, I mean, this, this are uh, 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 research uh, about that. Uh, we are preparing a paper of uh, detective for Catalan, which is uh, one of the uh, one of the languages that are also spoken in, in Spain, and um, and with Maria uh, Rausenberger, uh, we. Uh, during her PhD, uh, we explore uh, how um, uh, 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 items that are not linguistically related, but that are related to to to, to you know music, music and and visual items, you know, can help okay to screen dyslexia. So this can lead to a universal dyslexia screener, but this is very hard. Okay, this is a line of research that is super 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 hard. I mean, we we will see if we can carry on on that. Yes. Uh, uh, sorry, and that is that is uh, Victoria. I mean, if you want to join, I will be happy to. <laughs> so. No, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Anytime. So, and, and and my my one of I mean I really would like to to go back to to academia. I mean, this is um, this is one. I mean, I mean yeah, I I, mm -hmm. I really enjoy. Yeah. I, I envy you guys. I mean, you're having two, two days ahead of conference. So cool. <laughs> and um, are there any programs at present uh, to that you plan to expand to other countries? And Dragon is specifically very interested in Italy without any bias, you know? <laughs> so, so, yes. So the problem is, uh, well, uh, if, uh, the the problem is that this is harder at, as it looks. Okay, so it's not only uh, translating. Okay, the, the research. I mean, you need to. I mean, to actually make something that actually can screen dyslexia and that can help children with dyslexia, you really need to be able to extract the patterns. Okay, of uh, mm -hmm. those patterns that are linguistic patterns and other types of patterns, and to be able to integrate them into exercises and to be able to to really. Try to find this, okay? And 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 we did this for Catalan, and it took us. We started in two thousand sixteen, okay, and we are launching this now. So it mm -hmm. took us this year. So 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 the first the first um the first barrier is that it's hard, okay. This is not like a translation. The first barrier is that from a research point of view, it's hard. 
the second barrier is that you need you need resources and we don't have the, the money okay to, to, to hire you know the people needed to do this okay uh so so it's hard it is it uh, you need you need uh, resources and 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 also you know uh, this uh, i mean uh, uh, i mean this is a social venture so at the end i mean if you go to a to a to a venture capital to ask for resources i mean what they want is to earn a lot of money and you cannot offer that with this okay so it's not that easy okay to get to get the the the, the funding i don't know if i'm making myself clear so so yes so, yes so so that, those are the main the main barriers so we try we are doing this the fastest as we can um <laughs> but yeah mm -hmm. i really i mean yeah uh, let, let's see let's yes. see uh, we have time maybe for one more question because we are already getting into the break. So I wanted to give the floor to Sylvia, who is raising her hand. Hi, Luz. Um, thank you very much for this amazing talk. Um, maybe you mentioned this when I, and I, uh, I, I didn't hear it, but um, you said, for instance, that you are working on the version on of, on the Catalan version for detective that you are exploring other languages, uh, but I was wondering uh, what happens with the bilingual children that are used to uh, use, for instance, Catalan, Spanish. If there are specific patterns observed in this um, specific population group when it comes to dyslexia, to dyslexic errors. Yes. Okay. So, so that's a very good question. So, uh, so for example, in the screener test, okay, one of the features that we take into account is bilingualism. Okay, and okay. this is one of the of the main. I mean, this is age. Bilingualism are very, very, very important features in in the machine learning model. Okay, because this plays a very, a very big role. Now, uh, the 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 part of that we are doing for detective for English actually is for bilingualism. So, so here okay. we speak a lot of schools that are bilingual okay and what happens okay you're start you're studying in, in english and in spanish or in spanish and in english but children with dyslexia in english they have issues in spanish imagine in english right that is i mean it's hell okay for a person with dyslexia so 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 this is uh, so what we're doing we're doing specific exercises okay for children that that for bilingual children or for for children who wants to be bilingual, okay, that have dyslexia uh, uh, for English. And for that, how are we doing that? We took the errors for child of children, I mean, the, the errors of children, of Spanish children, while uh, writing or reading in English, okay? And then we found out that the patterns of the errors there are different than the, than the English patterns. Why? Because you have linguistic transference, okay, from Spanish to English. So, so this is, this is, the, the point here is this is super complex okay so from a from a linguistic point of view uh, um so so this is how we're doing it sylvia very good question no bilinguism is is, is one of the, one of thank the, you Luz. Yeah, my, my pleasure. Yeah. thank you mm -hmm. And, and just if you have a very quick comment on uh, a question from Ted in the chat, uh, who mentions that while not related, there were similar papers being shared uh, about automated detection of autism. Yes, some of these were mine and they were very heavily inspired by Lucy's work <laughs> on detecting dyslexia. But um, he asks, do you think the detective platform could be adapted for other projects, I guess, for other conditions? Yes, uh, yes, Ted, very, very good question. Thank you. Uh, we actually evaluate uh, detective with uh, children with attention deficit disorder, actually, when we were doing this evaluation. And uh, children with, uh, with, uh, with attention deficit disorder, they improve, but uh, 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 not, not to the extent that we can say, yeah, this is, you know, or children without dyslexia, because this was our, our control group, they also improve, but, you know, so at the end, what we found, if we want to be strict, you know, uh, uh, in terms of, of, of science, okay, uh, 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 at the end, at least this, we made, you know, the, 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 I mean, we, we found these patterns in people with dyslexia, and what we found is at the, 
I mean, it can be used for other things and it's not, not going to, har to harm them. I mean, they improve, okay? And, and significantly improve, I mean, uh, but uh, for children with dyslexia, because it's, it's by basically tailored for them, the impact is much greater. So, so, so this is why we decided to, 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 to focus on this. Uh, uh, if we were only thinking in market, in market and in business, maybe we could uh, <laughs> market it in a different way. But because you know, at the end, I have a, uh, I'm a scientist inside. You know, I, I, I decided to, to to only focus in in what I think. Um, I mean, and what we found that it was the greatest impact. Mm. And, and we Thank noticed you. made any research. Uh, Victoria knows a lot about that. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, that was very valuable and I'm so glad we got to hear a talk that was not just about the research side of things, but uh, the entrepreneurial side of things. And I hope, I mean, I can only hope that this has inspired someone in the audience to, to actually, uh, you know, follow a path where the research gets implemented to help the public. Um, I can't thank you enough. It was an honor for us. <laughs> And with this, um, let's now start uh, the break. Uh, and uh, we are going to then join here in 10 minutes for our first, um, uh, you know, our second technically session, uh, which will be on the topic of education. Thank you, Luz. See you. Bye. Thank you.